Good morning, happy Friday, or Saturday for you guys. Um, I gotta head to Berkey here this morning. We've got a uh, meeting with our grain bin supplier, or the, one of the guys that, yeah, who we've done projects with in the past to come and look at the site down there and see what we can do, what we should do, and price some stuff out and talk through the possibilities. We have several different options. We're trying to figure out what what what's best, what we need, what, how to do it, all that stuff. If you missed it, we talked about doing a grain bin system project when we were down to Berkey last week one day. I'll talk about a little more when we get down there. Um, preliminary stuff here, more so than anything, but got to start somewhere. down here we'll talk about our project again here in a little bit what all we plan to do we got some equipment down here that needs cleaned up and put away at some point but we'll get there plan is to leave the bean head here and that trailer at least not the truck but i'd like to power wash them first we've got the green cart in the 8rx here that needs uh power wash the green cart i think we're going to leave that barn here with the land all this down here we need to disc his corn stalks um, dad brought it down with the 8430 that's sitting here, but then unhooked it because he wanted that tractor to use on his scraper. Leveling off some spoils from cleaning a ditch out this summer. And then we got the corn head here that that's going to go back to Waldron, but um, it could get cleaned off, blown off, or whatever. Anyway, we'll get to that stuff. We just haven't really had time. We've been focusing on other stuff, although warm, sunny weather is a pretty good time to run a power washer and probably be doing it anyway real quick just uh, overview of the grain system here and what the plans are that bin is good that's our big uh, 20,000 bushel GSI top dry bin overhead 3,000 bushel overhead bin that's good and then this one here is a little 24 foot uh, GSI top dry not nearly as tall not a real big bin but it's a drying bin and will stay right where it's at um, the other three however we'll walk around over here away from this fan these three bins are old and small and the foundations are starting to give out and they're just not great. So our thought process here is to kind of eliminate them. Um, we want to take all three of them out and replace it with two bigger, potentially, or at least taller um, bins that give us a little bit more storage, a little bit more convenience, and we won't have... Uh, We'll have two instead of three. This bin is the original bin from the late 60s, I hear. This one was put up a couple of years later, and um, they're both 5,000 bushel old butler bins. They've been fine for what they are, but they're not great. The other one over here is a Boffman bin that I was told was put up after this bin. However, this bin I know was put up in 89, and when I was looking at the door over here, Somewhere, I saw somebody had written something. Where did I see that? There was a date written on here. It was in 1981. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. I don't see it now. Huh. Right there. I'm not sure what that says. Six rings corn on one 182, maybe? So it was 82. So I'm wondering if that bin was put in um, before I was told. Anyway, point being, it's going to come out. Now, this is a 24-foot diameter bin. Those two are 21-foot diameter bins. We don't have a ton of extra room here between this bin that's staying, that bin that's staying, and the uh, Quonset Hut Foundation over here. But there is some room, and our thoughts were that maybe we could squeeze a 27-foot diameter bin in there and go 11 rings tall, which would be the same height as that bin. And that would be like a 20,000 bushel bin and would increase the uh, storage capacity that we have by quite a bit. It's really close to the distributor, um, so the spout should hit it just fine. We might even be able to go to a 12 ring bin. I don't know if we would go any taller than that, but it would give us the storage, some more storage for corn that we're looking for. And then over here, we thought we could put a 24-foot diameter bin in here, shift it that way maybe just a little bit, that would allow the pipe 
to continue to hit the leg there, uh, which is nice so that we don't have this. This unload for that bin is not good. It's got that elbow in there or that knuckle with an incline and then it goes all the way through this other bin. We don't like that. We're trying to eliminate that. The other thing we could do if we can't hit it straight is to just put a, um, a little kind of jump auger in here where you got that going in and then it comes down here to the ground and then you'd have a spout come out and dump into another one. So that would be the other option. But anyway, our guy's here. We're gonna go over it and we'll see what we can come up with. Ah, just made it back from Berkey. Dad and Phil are still down there. Well, Phil's still down there. Dad went down. He got done spraying the wheat. Um, so we're basically done with the sprayer for the year. He's got one more field of corn stalks I think he was gonna spray uh, with some 2,4-D for winter annuals and stuff. Um, but yeah, that stuff's about done. He went down to run the disc here tonight on corn stalks down there, keep the tillage stuff moving. I'm gonna go spread that lime pile that got delivered yesterday. So we'll done with the lime up here and then the spreader could go to Berkey. I'm debating whether I wanna take it down there today. The problem is getting back. Um, or wait until Monday. I don't know. We've got a lime pile down there that could get spread. I was thinking about getting some chips. I need to make a phone call. See about spreading some chips and see what my crop consultant thinks about that. Well, you've missed half of it. <laughs> Just about. Um, we loaded up there. I was on the phone, so I didn't get to show you. But uh, we loaded up the one and spread the zone in that back corner. We're going to go and load up again and we have another zone over on that corner so here's what we just did and we have this to do and we should use everything up i think we can put the rest of it in the spreader right now might have excuse me we might have a ton or two left over when we get done with the zone but like i said the other day with the calcium line we'll just spread it out it's not a big deal um, we'll, we'll get it done here all right well there's that good enough all right, we are spreading. This zone here is a ton to the acre, 2,000 pounds. I think the other one was like 2,200 pounds per acre or something, so. Anyway, this doesn't take long. Point rows, lots of turns. That's what we get, lots of turns. We're gonna have plenty here. We still got, we'll still use up a fair bit of that. It's piles going down, but we are gonna have plenty. All right, um, well, I got done spreading and came back here and I'm not gonna go to Berkey because I don't have any way to get back until dad's done disking, but that might be late tonight and there will be nothing for both of us to do down there. And um, I thought about taking the ripper over to the fields that were just spread because they need to get ripped and get that fertilizer or the, the lime and the chicken litter worked in. But then something else came up. So we're hooking up a trailer. We gotta go, we gotta go check some stuff out. Our tiling crew is working. I didn't show it on the other end, but they got a whole bunch of tiles sitting over there and we're digging and plowing and good deal. I don't know, it's kind of pretty. Oh, good morning again. Well, yesterday I kind of ended that abruptly and I well, didn't have that much content, so we're just gonna tack today's on it. I rented a Harley rake to fix my lawn up here. It's a Saturday morning. We're going to go get that and get to working on this. So i got to take the uh, gooseneck trailer down and get it. And we'll come back and try and get some grass planted today. It's November. It's way too late to plant grass. We're going to do it anyway. Oh, you want to know what I had to go check out last night? It's the truck warming up. I'll show you. My wife's been bugging me for a long time to buy us a gator for the, for the house, not for the farm. And then she found this on Facebook yesterday. So I bought it. Not a gator, not even close to a gator, but it'll fit the bill. This will work. It's, uh, I don't even remember what the heck the brand is. Dynamo, Dymo, something, I don't remember. I'm sure it says somewhere. Uh, it's a it's a it's a cheap Chinese import sold at Tractor Supply, and it's nothing fancy. But the price was very right on it. 
It's got this, uh, got this rear bench seat, folds down into a little cargo bed so we can all ride on it. This is for family cruising trips back to the woods. It's not super fast, only does about 25 miles an hour, but for what we're doing with it, that's okay. It'll work just fine. So yeah, we got this. It's just a little uh, air-cooled engine. I think it's something like eight and a half horse. It's not very big, um, but it does cruise along all right. It's got some really nice features as far as like really bright LED headlights. It has built-in turn signals, um, high-low, reverse, independent four-wheel suspension. That's not bad. Somebody tried to add a hitch receiver to the front here, and well, we won't be towing anything with that. I don't know what the deal was there, but whatever. Got these mirrors on it. Came with the windshield. So the battery was questionable. It started right up when I got there, but the guy told me, he's like, oh, I had to charge it a few days ago because it had been sitting for a while. And I ran it and then got it on the trailer, and then it wouldn't really start when I got it off the trailer. Let's see if it starts now. Oh. Oh, yeah. Not bad. Well, maybe the battery's okay. Turn signal. Bright lights. Low beams. It's 1,600 miles on it. It's a 2022 model. So it's not very old. It was less than half the price of what the new ones are. And very cheap or reasonable, especially compared to what a Gator is or, you know, something that's better. And I get it, but it'll work for what we're doing. Anyway, let's go get my rake. I brought plenty of trailer. Oh, is that for you? Is that for you? <laughs> you can look, Grayson. It's not really a go kart, but it's for us. Can we drive it? Golf cart. It's kind of like a golf you cart. Buy it? Yeah. Can we drive it? Yeah. Right now. I mean, if you want, it's cold out. You don't have a coat on. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have for the day rented this uh, 2032R with a Harley rake, and we got a little learning to do to figure out how this thing's going to work. I need the parking brake. But basically we're gonna use it to grade off and smooth off and clean up the dirt that we piled in here the other day and get it ready to plant some grass. And then we'll probably spread some grass seed on it later too. But it's got a drum there that spins on the PTO shaft. Gauge wheels on the back. I have no idea what this added piece of angle iron is here for. Keeping it square, that's why. Because you can turn it, that's what it is. You can turn it so that it rakes stuff off to the side. Put this in this hole. That's what that's for. All right, we're gonna just try it for a little bit and see how it works and then we'll adjust. Wow, this thing works really well. I don't have it very deep right now or down very far. I'm just trying to crash some of the surface stuff up and level. I'm all done here. and level and that's is, this is that's what we wanted awesome there's a nice little pile of loose fluffy dirt Just leveling it up making it nice and smooth coming off the driveway sloping down into the field and off the road here so we can get equipment in and out without going on the nice I'm about done on this side and we'll go over to the other side Okay, well, I got this uh, south side of the driveway here. Nice, I like it a lot. We'll have to do a, maybe a little hand raking just along the edges here. I got a little divot up there I need to fill in, but I can't get so close to the road. Um, but that looks awesome, like awesome, awesome. So we're gonna start working over here a little bit. Part of that is that I'm filling in the road ditch a little bit, just making it so it's not quite so deep and less you know, hard to mow, making it easier to mow so that it's, I can drive through it better. It's just too deep, so I need to move my mailbox. It's just sitting here with these um, blocks on it. We 
I used to have it concreted in over there, and then Dad clipped it with the lawnmower one day. It felt bad, so he made this up. And he's got me a nice new post and everything, but I wasn't ready to install it because I didn't know exactly where I wanted it, and I knew I wanted to do all this dirt work here yet. So once we get all that done, then we can, you know, put a permanent mailbox in. But that's beside the point. We're going to get it out of the way right now. Well, we're doing pretty good here. Other than the one spot on the concrete where I caught the edge and chipped it. We don't have that. It's alright. Some rocks. We're going to have to clean up the, the, the stuff we're raking off here. We'll get back to that. Got a loader on this tractor, so it's easy. Kind of got that depression filled in there, especially where the mailbox was. Got this corner nice. Had a little bit of a low spot up there along the driveway, but I've been trying to drag some of this high spot from right here up there. For the most part, it's not too bad. A couple more passes and we'll call it good enough. All right, much better, much, much better. So it makes the top nice and smooth, but it's still pretty firm underneath. You don't want it to be super loose for grass. It'll make ruts and stuff, but you need loose dirt on top. Hold the moisture and get the grass to sprout. So, um, yeah. Just need to fill in right along the edges here. Sweep the dirt off of my concrete. Then we need to rake up all the uh, grass and roots and rocks and that stuff and get them picked up. And we can seed some grass. Oh, we got a little wave there we're gonna have to hit that one more time looks good what do you think cool. look good yeah yeah are you cold yeah. you're a crazy kid all right looks good i think we're ready for seed except for it's almost noon and there's a football game on at noon that i'm gonna go watch and then we'll come back and do seed yeah that's how this is gonna work today because i can the idea is that it's gonna rain tomorrow and we don't have to actually water this. I don't know if it's going to grow anyway. This fall, it's way too late to be planting grass seed. But we are still fairly warm. Temps up in the 50s and 60s a few times. Um, so I think it will be okay. And even if it doesn't germinate and grow this fall, it should. In the spring, as long as the seed is still there. But uh, hopefully it sprouts and we get a decent stand. If not, we'll just seed it again in the spring. At least everything will all be leveled up. We won't really have to worry about doing all the grading work. We just scratch it up and replant it. The, um, the issue here is that I already have the bag of grass seed. I got it way back in August when I knew I was going to be doing this. Grading, and I thought I was going to get it done before replanting seed it in September sometime and then that didn't happen and grass seed the germ doesn't always keep real well like it should be fine it will be fine it would probably even be fine in the spring but I'd rather plant this bag out now and if I had to buy another one in the spring we'd buy another one it ain't no big deal well the football game went well and um, I got done with this uh, tractor we got everything graded off good so I'm gonna go ahead and take it back drop it off uh, at the rental place. I rented it for four hours. Technically, I don't have to have it back till Monday morning, and I've only put a little over two hours on the tack, so we could keep keep it, but I really have nothing to do with it, and it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so it doesn't do me any good. I've got time now, so we'll get it returned. I'm going to give my buddy a call, see if I can get some straw bales on my way back, and then uh, try and get some grass planted tonight. There we go. If I had more than one bag of grass seed to, to, to do, I'd take that one home. But we got one bag. We can use our spreader. It'll be just fine. So anyway, they're done. There, we're good. All right. I got that uh, tractor and Harley rake took back, taken back. Took back. Jeez. Stopped at my buddy's on the way back. Grabbed a few straw bales. I have some uh, bagged fertilizer. So we're going to spread some of that on here real quick. And I grabbed my bag of grass seed. And we'll go ahead and uh, get it seeded down. We're going to run out of daylight here, I think. That's all right. This won't take long. It's working. You can 
see ya. All right, let's get to spreading. There's our grass seed. It's Sunny Lawn Mix. You know how I know? It says Sunny on it. Uh, there's an actual tag here with all the other stuff. It says what it actually is. We've got Kentucky bluegrass, perennial ryegrass, perennial ryegrass, boral creeping red fescue, that stuff. I don't know what's any good or not, but that's what the rest of my lawn is, and so it'll match. Losing my light. I can't really do this and show you because I got a hand crank, but we got this really cool old uh, cyclo cedar spreader thing that works great for grass seed. I can control the speed of it. I can see exactly where the spread's going. We're about done. Grass seed goes fast. Okay, I can show you. Definitely out of daylight. All right, well, we got our grass seed spread. I'll try and spread some straw real quick. Fortunately, you can do that in the dark. It'll be just fine. Well, I got straw on it all. I started with the stuff farther away where it was still at least a little bit of light and uh, finished up here by the house where I have house lights. It's probably pretty thin in some spots. Can't see real good. I don't know. I got a couple bales left, but... I think I'm gonna just leave them on a the trailer or put them inside so they don't get wet and then if I need to fill in some later we'll do that so I'll start getting stuff put away here the straw is there because one it helps bury the seed a little bit without actually working it into the dirt um, which helps it start to grow and germinate but two and the big one is to conserve some moisture so hopefully it rains tomorrow and that'll mat the straw down and get it nice and moist underneath it and then that'll help the seed germinate and it won't dry out so fast. If it doesn't rain tomorrow, we might have to think about watering it. We probably won't, but we'll have to think about it anyway.